Hello and welcome, I'm Ajax Post and this is my very first Transport Fever tutorial. Well, a quick sort of look at how one of the newest features in the game uh, as part of the uh, release, as part of the update that was released in March 2017 uh, is a neat little feature which I didn't understand. It was just one line in the release notes and first off I had no idea what it meant and then secondly I didn't know how to actually achieve it once I'd understood it. Um, so I did some googling around and looked in the Steam community forums and so on and eventually worked it out. Um, it is actually reasonably straightforward but I thought some things just look better if you can actually see them being done and working in a live model. So what I want to do in this little video is just show you how this new feature that came out as I said in the March 2017 update, the double split switch if that's what you call it. I'm no expert in railway terminology <laughs> but it's described as we can now do double split uh, on, on train tracks. So what I've done here is I've set up a little sort of model of how we can use this. So we've got these four towns and there's one, everything comes into this one town here, Sawbridgeworth, and I have one line which goes up here to Kesgrave, one to Dover and one to Bromley. So basically there's three lines, three tracks coming out from here from this one central segment of track here for the three different lines. Now up to date in the old train fever and in transport fever to achieve that you use these long single switches. So we have one here which takes us from this one track to the second track and if we needed a train to go to the third track we'd have another switch here taking it from the second track to the third. Now I've made an assumption here that all the trains come up come up on one line just to make it easier to show um, and for me to, <laughs> me to create the example uh, but it can apply to anywhere where you've got trains that need to cross more than one other line of track um, as we'll see. So if we wanted to do this traditionally we'd have this quite long series of switches coming from here to here and then over to there. So if I show you that with the line colours on, those lines I've turned on, so they're all coming up here on this one shared line which is very bad design but for the sake of this ex exposition, this example, that's, that's how we'll keep it just to make my life easier and hopefully showing off how it works a little bit more straightforward. So they all come up here, so the, line, the track going up to Kesgrave just goes straight up, that's the yellow line. The track going off to the north is the blue line and that's switched over to the second track and goes up there. And the third line going to Bromley has to switch over first off to this second line, uh, travel a bit along there and then off onto the third track to go off over there to the far east into Bromley. Which is fine and dandy and it works but it's a bit of a, a long stretch of track and sometimes with the collisions you might get in the game or the slope issues that you can have when creating uh, these, these switches it can be a bit of a pain to do that. What we would like is a much more elegant and in fact real world apparently scenario where trains can actually cross more than one track at once. Now to be honest I'm not certain because I've not actually tried it in the past if you can do this anyway in Transport Fever. I guess you can because Transport Fever made a lot of changes over the original game in the way you can cross tracks. So what I'd like to do is say from this track here which is the track they're all coming up is go straight across the second track onto the third track which is fine and dandy. Now that may not work when I switch the lines on it doesn't because for some reason the routing has decided that it can use this section here still. But if I take that little switch out we can see what's going on here. So our third line train, let's get rid of that in case I delete anything else, just goes straight across the second track here onto the third track and everything is fine and dandy. But we still need this second switch here to take care of our second line, the blue line going up to, uh, to Dover. What the double split allows you to do is change this crossover here. Now you notice, if I hover over it, it highlights, which means I can click on it. And if I can click on it, this is the bit we were missing. Do we want to make it a double switch or not? At the moment it's not. So the default is it's a single switch. And if I turn the lines off, we'll see how that looks on the, on the track. 
So it's just going straight across. Now, unless you're a railway expert, you may not sort of recognize this, but this means that there's no way from this track coming in, this second line here, to cross onto that third line there. It has to go all the way over to the, to the fourth, up to the far side. Now, if I switch double switching on, there's a slight but very significant change in that track layout. It's added some extra curvature to the lines. And what that means is that I can use this one set of switches to go from this line here, the second line coming in from the left. I can actually go on to the third line here and also trains can use this same set of switches here to go on to the, third, on to the fourth track. That is so much shorter and more elegant than these double switches we had previously. Now if I turn this back on, it doesn't work because the game realises it's got a bit of root already, but if I take that out, I'm very careful, there it goes. So in this one set of switches, get rid of that again, I can go from track two here, to track three, and track four. And that is a double switch. And you can at any point click on the crossover and turn that off. Now this of course means I don't have a route for my, <laughs> my blue line to go anywhere. So I'd have to put in a separate switch for that. But if I put it back on, double switch, and there it is. All three lines now can travel effectively up that. Now obviously this will need to be switch con uh, sorry, signal controlled. So there'll be all sorts of issues with that. I'm no expert on, on signalling, so I'm not going to cover that here. But hopefully you can see exactly what we've got. Now if I don't know where my trains are at the moment. Got three trains navigating. There they go. They're all coming up. If I slow that down a bit more. So the blue trunk line is going to up there onto the second track out and which, which is my next train coming up I see straight up the yellow line where's my green train gone the green train has the longest way to, to travel oh he's stuck there uh, that's my signals I don't have my signals working right but that I hope does show you exactly what that note that little one line in the release notes means you can now do double switch, double slip switches in the game, which makes it a whole lot simpler and more elegant to create these crossovers on your lines. Anyway, that's it from me from my very first tutorial. I hope it's been useful to you, that you can see the benefit and how to achieve it. I so say the main thing, the problem I had was. Even if I understood what a double slip was, I didn't know in the game how you could do it. But it's as simple as that. You can actually click on the crossover, the switch itself, and make that change. So there you are. Thank you very much for joining me in this little uh, tutorial video. I hope it's been of use to you. If it has, do leave us a like. If you've got any other thoughts or suggestions on where this could be used, um, or any ideas about signalling would be gratefully appreciated. I all, you can, it's always worth learning more about signalling, if you ask me. Ah, here's our green train coming in. And he switches over. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, once again, from me, Ajax Post, thank you very much for joining me today. Hope this has been useful to you. But until next time, so, so until next time, bye-bye for now.